one day, the great sage Jagat Guru Shankaracharya was walking with 14 of his disciples when they came upon a very old man, barely able to stand without a cane. The man was fervently studying the elaborate system of Sanskrit grammatical rules under a prevalent belief that such efforts would lead him to salvation. Out of compassion for the man, Shankaracharya stopped right there and began to compose verses of Bhaja Govindam on the spot. He asks the man to adore the Lord and renounce the endless winds of desire, because through this he would attain the highest goal. Shankaracharya's disciples also joined in and composed their own inspired verses of advice, which are as relevant and powerful today as ever. Now even though these words may sound a little harsh, their goal is to cut through countless layers of attachment and illusion and lead us to the splendor of liberation, a state of unimaginable peacefulness and rapture that is much less harsh than the hot winds of desire and worldliness being described in the song. Love the Lord, sing of the Lord, adore the Lord. O oh, foolish one, when the appointed time for departure comes, the memorization of grammatical rules will not save you. of desire do not leave him. In childhood, one is attached to play. In youth, one is attached to a young woman. In old age, one is attached to anxiety. But to the Supreme Brahman, alas, no one is attached. Ah. Lying once 
once again in a mother's womb. This ocean of worldliness is extensive and difficult to cross. Save me, O oh Lord, through your grace. The body has become decrepit. The head has turned gray. The mouth has been rendered toothless. The old man walks supporting himself on a stick. Yet even then, the mass of desires does not go. Ah, under trees, yet the bondage of desire does not leave him. As long as he has the ability to earn money, his relatives remain attached to him. After that, when he daughters with his decrepit body, not even the people in his own house ask for news of him. Ah. Although death is the only refuge in this world, still one does not give up sinful ways. With his clothes made of cast off rags from along the road, a monk follows the path which is beyond merit and demerit. Neither I, you, nor this world exist, so why should he grieve? Ah. pilgrimage to the place where the Ganga joins the sea, or observes religious vows with care, or offers gifts 
and charity. Yet without knowledge, he does not gain release, even in a hundred lives. Who are you? Who am I? From where have I come? Who is my mother? Who my father? Inquire like this, leaving aside the entire world, which is meaningless and nothing but a dream. Ah. and the Sahasranama should be sung. The form of the Lord of Lakshmi should be always meditated on. The mind should be led to the company of the good, and wealth should be distributed among the impoverished. When youth is gone, where is passion? When the water dries up, can there be a lake? When wealth is lost, where are one's relatives? When the truth is known, where is this world? Through the company of the good, there arises non-attachment. Through non-attachment, there arises freedom from delusion. Through delusionlessness, there arises steadfastness. Through steadfastness, there arises liberation in life.